Hey, it's your favorite science teacher. I know you've missed me. I haven't done a video in a while. It's, uh, we are doing a chemical bonds video, part one of the chemical bonds video. And so we're gonna get on that right here. And so without further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen with you. All right. And here is our screen. All right. We're talking about atom stability and why chemical bonds are necessary. Okay, why chemical bonds are necessary. An atom is said to be stable, which means it is not, uh, which it, it means it is set or not set. When it's stable, set, it is set. All right, it is set. All right. not wanting to change, that makes it reactive or unreactive, Alyssa? Yes, very good, unreactive. If you're stable, you are unreactive and you do not want to change. You don't want to chemically bond if you're already stable. An atom that is unstable is one that wants to change. It wants to change, it is not set, and it is very not stable. If it's unstable, it's very reactive, all right? All right, and how an atom becomes stable deals with the atoms, what part of the atom? The protons, neutrons, or electrons? Electrons, which electrons? Not all electrons. The valence electron it deals with the atoms. Valence electron, very good. Valence electron. Two uh, prominent ways to be stable: to have either a full outer level or and or eight electrons in its outer level. And that's called the octet rule. All right, and so. I forgot to do that one thing harder. All right, um, so we're gonna do this one right here with lithium seven. We're gonna do the Lewis dot diagram and tell if it's stable or unstable. All right, and so let me get me a sheet here. All right, so lithium seven. Well, that's not good. It's going to be darker. All right, lithium seven. If we look on our periodic table, one of our older periodic tables, if you remember, uh, the number of valence electrons. The valence electrons in group one was always one. They had one valence electron. In fact, write this above yours. Write this above your periodic table. All right. The valence electrons, I just gave you a new periodic table. You're going to need, you're going to write one that says OX number and valence electrons. The ones for group one all have about one valence electron. And then I'm going to draw a quick line. I know you don't have a ruler yet, yeah, but all right. So one valence electron. Group two has how many valence electrons? Two. All right, group 13, which is oftentimes 3A, has how many valence electrons? Three, 14, four, 15, five, 16, six, 17, seven, and then 18 is eight, typically with exception of helium. All right, and so, and the number of valence electrons for the transition metals varies. The number of valence electrons for uh, 
um, for groups three through 12 varies. The number of valence electrons for groups three through 12 varies. The number of VE with a minus for, for groups three through 12 varies. This OX number, OX, we're gonna to get to that, not today. OX number is called oxidation number. And we're gonna to get to that this week, okay? Or maybe next week, um, but we're gonna to get to that. That's gonna be helpful, okay? It's gonna be helpful soon. It's not right now and I'm gonna to get to it soon, but I, I leave a blank because I'm purposely thinking ahead. All right. All right, so with that said, that's what we wanna emphasize. All right, so that's our number of valence electrons. All right, so for lithium seven, we want to do what again? We wanna do a dot diagram. So if I do the dot diagram for lithium seven, I do lit Li with how many dots? One dot. Is lithium stable or unstable? All right, lithium is unstable. All right, because it only has one valence electron. And but before I go to the next one, I want to I'll stay on lithium. I want to do the Bohr diagram just to verify it. I do want to do the Bohr diagram because the next one's going to require a Bohr diagram. Really. All right. Um, and so right here, it says lithium it, uh, seven is unstable. How do I get the number of protons, David? Yeah, the top left. All right, and the number on the top left for lithium is three. All right, so lithium has three protons. What does that number also tell David? Uh, it also determines how many electrons in the uh, spectrum have the bottom number. So there is the remainder of four. All right, it does help with that. Uh, the mass number, because some of these lithiums have uh, a, a mass number of six and some of them are a mass number of seven. That means the number of neutrons can vary. So some, uh, but that also tells, so you're right, it can help determine the number of neutrons. But what other subatomic particle is told by the atomic number? The electrons. So this has three electrons, three protons and four neutrons, because as David said, you subtract the protons from that and you get four neutrons. Which two go in the center, Matthew? Which two particles go in the center? Protons and neutrons, very good. All right. And then I'm gonna do my electrons on the first level. Staying with you, Matthew, how many electrons could go on the first energy level? Two. I've done two of my three. How many do I have left, Matthew? I had three electrons, I've already used two. One, all right. And so <clears throat> I'd write, if I want to do the electron dot diagram, I do Li with one dot because there's only one in the outside level for this atom. All right. <clears throat> all right, so what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have y'all do the next one, which is, you're gonna do the next one, helium four. I want the, I want the, um, I want the electron, uh, I want the Bohr diagram, and then I want the electron dots. I want this Bohr diagram and then the electron dot diagram. <clears throat> well, I gave you the Bohr diagram. I did it for you already. But I now need you to do the Bohr diagram and electron dot. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna come around in about one and a half minutes. Bohr diagram and electron dot. Diagram.
All right, so I'm gonna pause the video for a second. All right, let's go over this one right here. Um, we're doing helium four. Um, Alyssa, if you'll help me with this problem right here. Uh, um, helium has how many protons? Two protons. That also tells the number of what? Electrons. Thanks, Alyssa. All right, uh, how do I get the neutrons? Right here. Yep, so two neutrons, that's perfect. Which two go in the center, Alyssa? Uh-huh. And how many electrons could go on that first level? Two. All right, so if I do the Bohr diagram, I would write HE and I put how many dots? How many? Not eight. Even though they're typically all these elements have eight except for one. I'd only do two because there's only, it only has one level and that's the outside level for it. So there, I'd only do two dots. But helium, is it stable or unstable? Stable, all right? And that means because that first level is full. That's the reason why it's stable. It's stable because that first level is full. All right, uh, let's go do, uh, let's go to our next one right here. Our next set of the part of the notes here. All right, atoms, to become stable, atoms will either give away, receive, or share. Valence, and I want to add the word valence, valence electron. To become co forming compounds. So what they're going to do is they're going to give these electrons away. And so if you remember back in the beginning, I always said that the number of protons is how you tell an atom because atoms can gain electrons, they can lose electrons. And so therefore, the way you tell the identity of an atom is this number of protons. All right, but because atoms are gonna give away and lose and share electrons. Um, ions are atoms that have either gained or lost electrons, thereby having a charge thereby having a charge. And I would add what um, Aaliyah said, they're atoms or molecules, they can be molecules. So that was a good addition that she had just a minute because they could be molecules or atoms that have, that have gained or lost electrons, thereby having a charge. All right, so now we're gonna do our first type of chemical bond, okay? And this is actually gonna be like your homework tonight. You're gonna to have some homework. It's gonna, I'm gonna give you time to start in class. So it's not hard, it's actually very easy, all right? But if you can do number, the, what I'm about to do is gonna pretty much be a close to your homework. I'm gonna actually give you that as an example here. Um, so fluorine often gains an electron from another atom. So let's do fluorine on the back side here. I'm going to do fluorine on the back side here. All right. So we're going to call this fluorine 19. It's the most common fluorine because it's rounded to the 19. All right. Um, Josiah, how many protons, neutrons, and electrons does fluorine 19 have? Uh -huh. Yep. Which two go in the center? All right. Nine protons and 10 neutrons. They go in the center. And then I'm going to do my 
How many electrons go in the first level? Two. And then how many go in the second level? I had nine, so I've used two, so I have, I have seven more. So I'm gonna, how many can fit on the second level? Actually eight, eight, the second level can hold eight. And so I'm gonna put seven there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, the question is, is that second level full? It is not, so that makes this, and it's not eight either. So that makes it what? Unstable. And so typically what's going to happen is it's going to gain an electron, right? It's going to gain an electron. So let me add an electron with a different color. It's going to gain an electron. So I'm gonna add plus one electron. One electron, we'll say one electron, all right? There's a, some atoms that want to give away electrons and some atoms that want to do what? They want to, uh, to lose them. Some want to gain them and some want to lose them. So I'm going to redraw this out. All right, in fact, I'm going to draw it out like this. Fluorine with seven dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then if I'm, I'm gonna draw that plus that one electron, all right, that makes it become fluorine with how many dots? Eight, and that makes fluorine stable. Come in. Yes, I do. Let me pause my video here. All right, on the third one, what do you mean? On the third level, yeah. if, if for the next one, it, it could uh, it could hold up to eighteen, but it depends on how many do you have there. And, that, and actually, that third one for the other one is going to only have one. It's the next one, so you're ahead. Yeah, right, yeah. Yes. All right, and so I'm going to take one, and this is now has an extra electron. That gives it not nine electrons. It now has ten electrons. All right, and so that means. Uh, do I have more electrons or do I have more protons? Which one do I have more of? Uh, Layla, electrons or protons? Electrons. So that gives us a negative charge because electrons have a negative charge. So fluorine has a negative one charge because it gained an electron. All right. And so it gained an electron. And that makes it have a negative one charge. One E, I added one electron. So plus one electron, that makes it 10 electrons. All right, um, going back to our notes right here. It says ions are atoms that have gained or lost an electron, thereby having a charge. So does that make fluorine an ion? Did it gain an electron? Yes, does it have a charge now? Yes, it does. So this is an ion, all right? This is an ion, all right? And uh, we're gonna talk about ions a little bit more this week. I think a good little quick experiment we might do this week is with ions and how, what they do. Because since they have a charge, they now can attract and repel. So we're gonna get to that this week here, especially. Um, that might be a little small experiment we're gonna do probably on Friday. Um, so the next one real quick, all right, the next one is sodium, we're gonna do sodium 23, all right, sodium 23, I'm gonna go back over here to my picture here, sodium 23, all right, um, help us with this one right here, uh, Richard, or Gavin, excuse me, Gavin, how many protons does sodium have? Yeah, you find out the number of protons by the atomic number. So what is the atomic number? It's right here. Eleven. So it has eleven protons. That also tells the number of electrons. And it's got, and how do you get the number of neutrons? Gavin. 
Yeah, so the number of protons from 23, so I get how many? Uh, 23 minus 11 is 12. Which two go in the center of the atom? Yep, protons and neutrons. Excellent, good job. All right, and then we're going to do the electrons here. All right, how many electrons, um, Gavin, can go in the first energy level? Two. two. I've used two out of 11. So now how many do I have left? Eight. I have used two out of 11, so I have nine left. All right, how many can go on the second energy level? Eight. eight, and so I have nine, so I'm gonna put eight only there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I have one more and I'm gonna put it on the third level here, okay? All right, so if I drew its uh, dot diagram, what would it look like? Help us out, Aaliyah. Sure. If I drew its dot diagram, what would it look like? Uh, put an X right next to sodium. All right, and, and sodium is in A, uh -huh. and then how many dots? One dot. All right, now, how many more does sodium need to become stable? How many more does it need to become stable? Seven more. It's not gonna get seven more. Instead, it's easier for it to lose one or give one away. If it gives one away, then you have the, the, the level before it, it has how many? Eight, so that makes it stable. So if it gives one away, so we're gonna take away an electron. So minus one electron, when I take away one electron, that makes, I'm gonna take this electron away. Let me grab my marker here, if I can find one. Marker go. Right, so we'll just do it this way here. I can't find it, but. All right, we take this one away and we take away one electron. So now it's got 10 electrons. Which one does it have more of, electrons or protons? It has 11 protons and 10 electrons. So which one does it got more of? Protons. So this is going to have a what charge? If you have more protons and electrons, you have positive charge. All right, and so that's what we're trying to show with these here, is that this is gonna have a positive charge, all right? Because it loses an electron. Now, would this be called an ion? An ion is an atom that has either gained or lost an electron. Did it gain or lose an electron? Yeah. What did it do? Did it gain or did it lose? It lost an electron, and that now doesn't have a charge. It has a positive charge. It has a positive charge. That's what an ion is, an atom that has either gained or lost an electron, thereby having a charge. Now, yes, I will. All right, and so that's the key thing we wanna emphasize from this here. And these now have opposite charges and opposite charges will attract. And that's what we're gonna to try to do with on, our, on uh, Friday. I'm gonna to try to give you uh, two balloons and you're gonna get two balloons and you're gonna, uh, again, do different things with the balloons. When they're the opposite charges, they're going to pull to together, but if they're the same charge, they're going to do what to each other? Well, yeah, pull from each other, or push away, all right, repel. And so I'm trying, we'll try to do that with y'all on Friday, all right? Um, so uh, back over here. Now, again, we're gonna do this one and the other part of the other one here. Can we, now that's gonna speed up because that was the hardest part of the notes. Now we're gonna speed up a little bit on this here. Chemical bonds are forces that hold atoms together, are forces that hold atoms together. There are three types, as I said earlier, ionic, covalent, and metallic, as Leah said earlier. Um, ionic bonds. All right, are formed 
are an attractive force that holds ions together. Ionic compounds are held by ionic bonds. Ionic bonds are formed by the giving away and receiving of electrons. By the giving away and receiving of electrons, forming compounds. Ionic bonds are always between a metal and a non-metal. You're doing great, keep it up. We're gonna stay with it right here. Um, and we're gonna, again, we're gonna speed it up and a lot more through this process here. All right, here is the examples. And this is what you're gonna do for the homework, okay? All right, this is sodium chloride. This is a compound. All right, this is a compound. All right, we're gonna do the dot diagram for, uh, well, actually you're gonna do E first. We're gonna do E first. That's sodium fluoride. Not, actually, we need to do calcium. Let's do calcium fluoride. It's not that's correct. CaF2, excuse me. Yeah, let's mark out the Na and put CaF2. All right, and so I'm going to do the before, and then I'm going to do the after. Then you're also going to do the other one. So this is what our class, our homework is going to be like. All right, so learn how to do it right now here. All right. Um, and again, this is now that we've done the hard part of the homework, this notes, this is the easy part. All right, so we're doing CAF2, this is called calcium fluoride, it's a compound. All right, and calcium has how many valence electrons? It has two valence electrons, so I'm gonna do CA with two dots. All right, fluorine, how many fluorine atoms do I have? One or two fluorine atoms, there's a two beside it. So like H2O, that means there are two hydrogens. This would mean there are how many fluorines? Two. All right, so I'm gonna do two fluorines. How many valence electrons does each fluorine have? Seven valence electrons. So I'm going to do seven dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> yeah, you can do it beside by all means. Yes. Yeah, both of the Fs are seven dots. Which one of these are stable? Huh? None of them. These are all unstable. And so what they're going to do is they want to form, they're not going to stay by themselves. They're going to come together because that's lower energy. Okay. And so calcium is going to, it needs how many more to become stable? Six. It's not going to get six. So instead it's going to give two away. So if it gives one to this one, and then one to this one. Now the after calcium is lost to electrons. When you lose electrons, what do we say happens? You get a what charge? No, if you lose electrons, you gain, you get a positive charge. So I'm gonna put calcium with a positive two charge because it lost two electrons. And fluorine each now have how many valence electrons? If you can say gained one. They both have eight. So I'm a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's a negative one charge. And the same thing for this fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's a negative one charge. Now, what do opposite charges do to each other? And this is what we're gonna see in the lab we're gonna do on Friday. So I'm gonna to try to do it here. What do opposite charges do to each other? They attract. So this whole thing pulls to together. together. And this is a compound. 
This is an ionic compound formed by ions. All right, so you see what I did. I did the before, they were all unstable by themselves. But then they came together. One gave one of the atoms gave away electrons, the other one gained it. That makes them stable, and those have opposite charges and pull them together. All right, that's the way this ionic bond works. I want you to do the next one right here. It's down here at the uh, bottom right here. I want you to do, or not, it's at the top, not the bottom right here. Here it is. I want you to do sodium chloride. I'm gonna pause the video. I want you to do the before and then the after. I did the harder one. I purposely did the harder one. All right. All right. I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna come around about I'm recording. No, you're gonna do it right here behind my desk. If you'll write before and after. All right, you can see it right there. And, and I will talk to you also. All right. All right. Do the before. Do y'all see it? Oh. Yeah. So what was the problem? It was um, sodium and chlorine. Or chlorine, yeah, thank you for correcting me. Mm -hmm. I can't see the dot. Can you darken them a little bit on the chlorine? Can you see them now? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, they're all unstable. Now, why is sodium a uh, positive charge? Because it gave one away. Yeah, that means it gave more what? It gave away electrons. Um, you have more protons or electrons? Protons? Yeah, that's why, because protons have a positive charge. So if you have more protons, you're going to have a positive charge. Why does chlorine have a negative charge? Because it gained one from another. Yeah, it gained what? A uh, uh, valence electron? Yes, yeah, so that means it has more electrons or protons. Electrons? Yes. And now those opposite charges will do what to each other? Uh, come together? Come together. That's exactly right. All right, good job. All right. Um, I'm going to stop mostly with that. Well, actually, I want to do one thing. I want to do one thing, and then we'll stop for here. But I want to do one more part of the notes over here. And not all the notes, I just want to do the first couple sentences here, okay? I'm not doing all the notes, I just want to do the first couple sentences. We're not even going to do the second one here. A covalent bond is where atoms share valence electrons. So that they can become stable. Covalent bonds are often represented by a dash. And they, uh, covalent bonds form between, I want to add one more thing, covalent bonds form between a non-metal and a non-metal. That's all for our notes after we write that. All right, they form before a non-metal and a non-metal. And that's going to help us with the beginning of tomorrow's lesson. All right. Uh, but that's for that right here. Your homework is to do this. Here's what your homework is. All right. Let me give you the homework. It's not, it's the same thing you just did. All right. Um, you're going to do, here's the sheet. You're going to get this. And this says MGCL2. You're going to do the before. And then you're going to do the after. And this one says MGS. You'll do the before and then the after. 
You'll do the before and after for these two, and then there's two on the back at the very bottom. You'll do the before and after on the bottom. There's six total that you have to do the before and after. That is your homework. I'm gonna give you the rest of the class period to do that. All right, with that said, I'm gonna end our notes, and that's all we have for today.